burn no nigga, bitch, cause I'm from Dallas, Texas. If he flexing in my section, then we full court press on. Alright, what's this? Episode 30. Officially episode 30. We here. Another episode straight forward in the H, man. We got river lines, river motherfucking lines river in the building. Motherfucking, <laughs> nah, motherfucking river. The biggest tourist. It's probably my favorite tourist right now. <laughs> Just for right now. Dang, your, your nigga over there, he a tourist too. Bro. Yeah, that's my other favorite tourist. But I can't really say that. That's a little, you know, zesty. That's a little. Yeah, that is that. Uh, uh, okay. That. <laughs> All right. All right. It's zesty, y'all. It's zesty. It is. It's you can't zesty. say nothing like that, man. But let's jump into it. You know what I'm saying? I. I'm glad that you were able to come join us today. Right. And first female rapper we'd have had come through. Period. Hey. One of the few, hey. you know, females that we'd have had come through. Hopefully we get a little trend going. Yeah. Right. And shit. Let's just, you know what I'm saying? Like I already said, let's jump into it. Let's do it. From I believe I did my little research. Mm. I did my little research. Mm -hmm. From Detroit though. Am I correct? I was born in Detroit. Um, I moved around a lot, though. Okay. Um, but Texas is where I've been for the longest. Um, like, I was here second grade, second grade coming up, and we moved around a lot. But I grew up um, in Lufkin, Texas, and I graduated mm -hmm. from there, and I came to PV. But I was, I've was i lived in Houston before, so I have Houston friends as well. Why not TSU? It's trash, bro. You know this. I'm, I'm going to be real. <laughs> it's trash. Um, <laughs> TSU was like never an option for me. I actually had never heard of them. And you gotta oh, think I'm damn. coming from Lufkin, Texas. That's bad. And they didn't well, I mean, it was it's my high school. They weren't just pushing like HBCUs, period. So I didn't know about other HBCUs that wasn't like Howard and Spellman and stuff like that. Um, so and this is why it's really important to have good mentors because my mentor, she actually went to PV and graduated. Um and it was really between Sam Houston and PV. I really just applied to supply. Mm -hmm. But um, I went to PV, T TSU was just, it just really was never an option for me. I mean, y'all cool. Yeah, it's always cool. we cool. Wait, so why you choose PV? Um, I really like this. I feel like everyone that went to HBCU says this, but I really like the culture. Um, I felt like it was family. I knew I was gonna go to PV, mm -hmm. but I really, it kind of cemented for me um, when I went for orientation and they had the band come out. Mm -hmm. And I love music, like all kinds of music. Um, so when they had that band came out, come out, I was like, yeah, they got rhythm, it sound good. Like, this is really where I wanna be. Cause I was, where I was staying and looking, that's like a Republican town. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? PV, like, we black up in there, so yeah. I can be myself for real instead yeah. of trying to keep code yourself. switching. So that's why I'm PV. That's real, that's real. So you said you you love music. When did that, that love for it really begin as far as, like, as far back that you can remember, what was the inspiration behind you getting into music? Um, My mom always kept us in something, gymnastics, dance, um, Music, I used to play the violin. That's really where it started. Uh -huh. um, I play, played the violin when I lived in um, uh, Mississippi. And then I played the flute. Uh -huh. um, and through there, I've, I've always been like a singer. And I was in choir. Um, I've just always been in choir. Even going up to PV, I was in choir. Now, like today, I don't play the violin. I don't, I don't play the flute. Um, but I can play some p some um, pieces on the piano, but not because I was taught, but because I can do it by ear. Like I have a musical ear what? to where I can do that. And YouTube, <laughs> musical oh. and YouTube. Um, but it started back when I was really, really young. Um, it I didn't even think about rapping until I started rapping. I used to write poems a lot, but I only wrote them when I was like mad or like sad or like really, really happy, like intense emotions, then I'll write. But I never thought about actually rapping until I actually rapped. So tell us about your first session. Were you your first time going to the, the studio, studio mm -hmm. okay. getting on the beat? Um, first time getting in the studio. So my first time in a studio, I was working with OG Bobby Billion. Shout out to him. Mo3. Um, Mo3, yep, yeah. That last time that he had did with mm -hmm. him. Um, I was working with him. Um, doing like background vocals. There's actually a song. It's called Trap Jumpin. It has Trap Boy Freddy. Um, I want to say Yellow Breeze might be on there too. And OG, if you listen to the very like end, there's a girl singing and she's so out of tune. That's me. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's me at the end singing that. Um, we had a session, 
Um, but his engineer slash producer that actually produced that song outside, I just begged him to get in the studio because I, I was writing and I was like, I, you know, just take a chance on me. And he did. And we made a few songs and it just kind of, you know, went from there. Up there in Dallas. What you was doing up there in Dallas? Yeah. No, he was actually in Houston. He used to live in Houston. Okay. But he moved up there in Dallas. Uh, I guess, think it's been like two years now. Yeah. But my first time in the studio, I think especially being um, a woman in the industry, especially as a rapper, people assume it's going to be like trash. Mm -hmm. And then when they hear it, it's like a pleasant surprise. Like, oh, it's not trash. And then it goes up a tear because it's like, oh, this is actually you actually kind of ate a little bit. Yeah. So in there, he he was he sat back and he was like, damn. He said, I thought you was going to come up in here and play on them. Like, you're not playing. So that's that's really how I knew that I was doing something. I will say, so from the music that I heard, you do a lot of eating on the beat. Yeah. Let's just say that. Yeah. So I heard you say, every time you drop, you remind me that you weak. Mm. I believe this is the season of dissing. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> if we could, shit. Yeah. Um, can we can we get the story behind that? I'm gonna be so honest. Hiss is not a diss. For like, real? When I said that, that was actually not directed towards anyone. Um, there's really not like there's not a name that I was thinking of when I did drop that. But I mean, a lot of people drop shitty ass shit all the time, and they keep dropping it. They keep harassing us with their music. But that's okay, because as an artist, you're supposed to keep harassing people with your music. But that specifically, like that song, that line, that actually was not towards anybody. And I got some lines towards some certain no. people. Oh. Like, I got whole songs towards okay. certain people. But that okay. specifically, just I was just popping my shit. What is it that be triggering you to go in there and just murder a motherfucker on the beat? When people play with me. Oh. Don't play with her. When people play Don't with play my with her. Do not. When people gaslight me. Because, you know, when you gaslight someone, you're trying to tell them that what they experienced, they did not experience. Yeah, they experienced it a different way. And that's triggering because I know what the fuck I said and what I did. I and I know what you did. And especially when people do fucked up shit to you and try to act like they the victim. Nah, yeah, bitch, yeah, come bro. here. You ain't no fucking victim. <laughs> you ain't no, come here, come here. I'm gonna put it on wax. So what's up? So... That that's I, I don't like being played with, and I was bullied. Like mm. in Lufkin, I was bullied. So when people play with me, it kind of taps into my inner child, and my inner child be one to slap smack the shit somebody, up. you know. Yeah. But the adult me, the the prefrontal cortex developed river, she's she's a lot she's a lot chiller now. A civil black. You know, she just gets on the mic, and I just might say a few things on there. Yeah, speaking on that mic stuff, I seen you on the radar. So like, can you tell me how all that went? Like how how that come apart um so on the radar is one of those things and this is this is really key because it's one of those things where it's really hard to get on there mm -hmm. like you have to know someone to know someone who knows someone i just ended up getting really lucky um that wasn't my first time meeting gabe or my first time um um i wouldn't want to say associating myself with them but like seeing them mm -hmm. um that was actually i want to say my second performance that i did um back in 2023 i went to south by southwest and i had performed and i met gabe you know he's um he owns the thing um that was a promoter had posted that and i had went through the process of getting on that show um and then for this specifically they had posted a flyer and i don't really think they read their emails for real like <laughs> i don't that's why i said you have to know someone it's mm -hmm. like some of these jobs you have to know someone yeah. to get in there so um, I just ended ended up seeing someone that I follow. Um, she does a lot of A and R, um, and she was doing A and R for that specific event. And mm -hmm. I reached out to her, and she kind of put me in connection with them. So that was really big for me. Yeah, you did. I know you were in it. So I, I watched it. You were in the hell for sure. For real. Yeah, you were in the hell for sure. And you know, I had to put I had to put that PV on. Yeah, there. I had I to make sure that they knew where school. I was coming from yeah. for real. Because I don't really I don't see a lot of people do that except one girl. One girl that she was from Howard. She wore some some shit up there. Mm -hmm. Um, that's had an HBCU, but. Yeah, that's how that shit went. It was it was dope. It, it was so fucking dope. So when these people be reaching out to you as far as like, okay, the closet on the radar, what is it to be going through your head when you read it? At least take us back to the first initial one that you did. 
like like what do you mean like with on the radar yeah do you think like because you know sometimes okay for instance you get an email you like damn am i tripping or a text and you like am i tripping this can't be real right is it every is it every, any of those moments there's a lot of moments with that specifically no only because um she does a and r like shout out to breezy um she has a and r and she's like she's trusted so mm -hmm. i knew that that was legit um when i reached out to her i knew that there was like no scams involved but um as soon as you start making music and putting it out there a lot of bots there's a lot of bots out there yeah. like a lot of people will try to finesse you try to have like um hey i have a show at 97.9 mm -hmm. uh if you send me 400 dollars, i'll put it on there and it's not the person Scam, it's yeah. a catfish they never got you. like they didn't change that username 14 times like all kinds of stuff so you just have to vet it and you don't be so desperate to want to be involved don't yep. be so desperate for opportunities because there's always opportunities i think right now i'm at a place not all the way but i can kind of pick and choose like what i want to do if i feel like doing this i'm gonna do this if i want to do this i'm gonna do that um but you just have to vet that's what a manager usually is for but since i'm doing it myself i just i'm very meticulous about the way that i go through things and research so you just you once you know once you know someone's scamming you mm -hmm. you know like once you know how they do it it's really easy to kind of pick up pick on it out scams yeah. and stuff okay so going back to pv when you first start putting your music out there and i'm a firm believer we all got haters in yeah. some way some form we may not know of them but we all got haters how do you deal with or what was that you know reaction that you got on campus from your music and how did you deal with the other women that might have been haters we often don't talk you know, about how there could be you know female haters or the uh, female aspect of it you know honestly i had already graduated from pv when i did release um oops so mm -hmm. i got a lot of support i mean personally I've, I've, i have experienced like i've experienced blatant haters but when i first started i didn't really i didn't really have i don't, I don't feel like i really had haters that i saw yeah. honestly like i mean i don't and i don't deal with it like if you don't like my music that's that's okay because mm -hmm. like like i said i've been in music all my life like i've been at pv choir i went to europe with pv just because like i'm on like i'm on a choir and you have to audition and get on there you don't just get on there like i've got a scholarship off that i've worked with people who have been grammy nominated been on broadway i have heard worse from better mm -hmm. so y'all don't have no degrees in music y'all literally just listen to rap on the radio <laughs> or on <laughs> apple music you are not a kind of a connoisseur in music so I don't it's I don't really give a fuck. Like it hurts when people don't like your shit because I'm a sense I'm a sensitive hoe, you know? I'm mm -hmm. sensitive about my shit. But I just I really don't deal with it. I had a situation like that where somebody public publicly said something about my music. Mm, you slapped the shit out of her? No. I would have. <laughs> no, because <laughs> When it comes from someone that is like your friends or that you really care about, that shit can hurt. Mm -hmm. And we're grown now, so I don't gotta slap you for opinion. I just don't have to talk to you anymore. Yeah, I agree with you. Because it's yeah. not the fact that you don't like my music. It's the fact that do you have to broadcast that? You don't yeah. have to like it, but do you have to broadcast respect, it? That respect, respect, face to me? face. Yeah. And that's why mm -hmm. people, I feel like a lot of these people be having these celebrities fucked up because they're like, oh, well, so and so had an opinion. But everyone else was commenting about it too. Yeah, bitch, but did you have to open your fucking mouth to your one million fucking followers that you didn't like some shit that someone else did? Mm -mm. Really? So that's how I feel about it. I feel like y'all are way too fucking opinionated on these fucking apps. I feel like y'all talk too much. Um, and I also feel like you can't get mad at celebrities when they are mad at other celebrities for opening their mouth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these motherfuckers don't know each other. Like the girl who went on that podcast, she had not even listened to my song before oh, wait, she, she did, did that. Oh, she got on the podcast. Okay. Yes. Yeah, oh. Sure. Yeah. No, it was a it was <laughs> another podcast that I had done, and um, on the clip, 
it's like he's like oh well she said this about you and i said oh there's no because i didn't know she said that so i'm like she ain't said it about me and then it cuts to her actually saying it uh, that was really like he got me on that that was funny but it wasn't funny when it happened <laughs> but it's funny now <laughs> it's funny now but that's why i have that opinion about that because people i don't know especially in houston are so driven by clout mm -hmm. like they're driven by yeah i don't know like they only want to talk to you because and it, honestly it's not even be about followers or clout sometimes it's just because you're personable and people like you and they want to be around you and maybe they use you as like a cloak mm -hmm. i don't know i'm just talking y'all got me nah, you spit some real shit Spets. that's real shit Spets. so Spets. you said that y'all kind of bounced around a little bit um this is a question that i think i want to ask all artists we know this, you know, from state to state, city to city. Every city has their own style of rap, style of flow, style of cadence, things like that. What state, city would you say, you know, touches you the most and you like to kind of emulate? Yeah. Who you base your flow off of, basically? Nobody. Nobody? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be so okay. honest with you. So I, I don't know where it comes from and i think that's maybe maybe because i moved around a lot mm -hmm. i feel like if i were in texas i probably would have more of a texas flow mm -hmm. but i'm from michigan so i talk really fast so that's how i i rap but i don't necessarily have a detroit rapper style mm -hmm. you know so i don't really base it off of anything i think lyrically i might look at I really like how Doja Cat does stuff. Kendrick mm -hmm. Lamar, like, I love the way that Kendrick Lamar um, gets his thoughts across on a song. And it's like poetry. J. Cole, I love mm -hmm. them. Uh, Logic, love them. Yeah. Very lyrical, very, um, they'll help you envision what they're trying to say. Um, but I don't go to them for like flows and stuff. I may, I might go to them just to get a feel for it. If I'm feeling a kind of way, mm -hmm. I might go listen like for inspiration. But, I don't really listen to other people and try to emulate that because that's just, I don't know. I, I, I just can't rap like that. <laughs> I just can't rap like other people. Wait, so do you freestyle or do you write? The word, like? I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. I cannot freestyle. I mean, I could probably like maybe do two or three lines like hat so, cat, pat sat, mm -hmm. and that's about it. Um, but I have to sit down and really write my stuff out and rap it over and over again. I got to change it. I wish I could freestyle though. I wish I could freestyle, but I'd probably be in the studio for like ten hours trying to figure oh. it out. I don't even like writing in the studio. Oh, like, so like, what do you like writing at? What do you be writing at? At my house, maybe in my car. Mm -hmm. Like, I like to sit and go through it on my own. I don't want to. And I wouldn't do that anyways, unless I, unless I just have money for studio time like <laughs> that. Because this is time is too much to be sitting up in there for five hours. Um, but I also like to know how I'm going to say something before I go in there mm -hmm. because time is money and you need to know how you're going to say it. Um, you need to have time to hear yourself on the mic because sometimes how we say things is not how we hear things or how it comes across on the mic. Yeah. Um, Uh, what Why are you letting me just talk like this? Nah, I love hey, you. I love hey, when people get in here like and start talking. Like, come on. Hey, I love when they talk, come in and start talking. Talk. Talk. That's what I'm saying. We but love it. Trust me. I actually it. had something on my head. Oh, the Kendrick and Drake thing. So we mm -hmm. talked about it down the hallway. And I want to jump into it because you mentioned Cole. And I love J. Cole. Mm -hmm. So what's your take on this whole little, you know, shit that's going on? It's pretty much done settled now. But let's let's see what uh, River Lions was thinking. So, when you say take, what you mean by like my take on it? Yeah, well, I already know what side you on. They don't know what side you on. But Come on, y'all. Come on. She's missing a chromosome, y'all. Come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all know who won that. Y'all know that Kendrick ate him up. Nah, I, I, I have lie. to walk out the club. Kendrick did. He ate him up. I he got to... saved though. Who got saved? Kendrick. He saved yeah. who? He got saved. He got saved by who? J. Cole dropping out. You think that J. Cole can watch Kendrick? I think he's walking him up and down the street. His arm's not long enough to box with a guy. Uh, you know what? I can always appreciate a wrong opinion. I can always appreciate a wrong opinion. Because I ain't going to cap. Kendrick would probably walk, walk 
J. Cole. Ooh. He gonna put his ass back in high. And that's and that's put his ass back in high. I don't know about that. You know what? Get on his bike and ride down the street. I don't know about that one. Nah, nah. I don't know. I don't know because I really like J. Cole. Kendrick Walker and J. Cole. That might be crazy. I don't know. You know what? You're right. <laughs> I think right. J. Cole like above Drake and Ken- Kendrick. In my head, yeah, he above both of them. I don't, I don't know. I, first of all, Drake isn't even in this conversation. Yeah. But when it comes to like lyrically, I don't. J. Cole and Kendrick, that is that is a hard one. How about Lil Wayne? Nah, he yeah, he's on the more. I've never been big on Wayne. What? I've never been big on Wayne. Wayne is good, but he's on the more. I've never been big good? on Wayne. Nah, he's Just too good. good. And I'm not that big on him either, but I know he's more than just good. People try to say that he's like the greatest. I don't think so. I ain't gonna lie. Wayne like, who would you say is top five? He's the greatest. All time. Who would you say? I wouldn't have, well, I would have Wayne in my five, but honestly, maybe four or five. That may not be the, I may not, honest, oof, oof. Top five ever or this generation? Mm-hmm. This generation. This yeah. generation. Nikki's number one. Yeah, facts. Nikki Minaj. I'm happy that we're. Are we are bar? Yeah. Bar? Okay. Um, Nikki is is I ain't no definitely. <laughs> Wait, I ain't no bar. bar shit. Shit. I ain't no bar. bar shit, but she's number one. She number one. Yeah. There were barbs and Kim. <laughs> um, Nikki Minaj. Dang, I really love Doja Cat. Um, I love Megan. This is hard. I really like all everybody. Wait, so wait. But okay, you know what, Glorilla. Okay. I love Glorilla. Okay, what I say, Nikki, Doja, Meg, Glorilla, and I and I consistently listen to them. And a fifth female rapper. No sexy. I like sexy. I listen to her music for sure, um, but just not like with them because mm-hmm. she she kind of just now is getting like mainstream. But with them, like I didn't put years and work and tears and sweat into they into they listen to their stuff. Um, I mean, I listen to Ice Spice too. I like I Ice Spice. Um, I don't, honestly, I'm just gonna do top four though. I bet. I'm gonna just do top four. It's just four. Yeah. Right, so Nikki, Megan, Doja Cat. Who's the fourth? Glorilla. Glorilla. And I, I like Lotto too. I need to get more into her music because I just she's just so cute. She just. Nah, so I ain't gonna lie. Her. She is. Yeah, she's Ooh. one of the ones. I'm not she gonna is lie. One of them ones. She's one of them ones. Hey, she's like one of them ones. Good. I Ooh. swear. So okay, <laughs> so this yeah. is straightforward. What do you see your rap career heading in? Maybe mm, two, three years. Two or three years. Okay, so this year I feel like I'm planting the seed. Mm-hmm. Um, next year I expect that seed to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I expect to have a a big song in the next year. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I feel like in the next six to eight months I'm gonna have a big song. Um, but just to be nice, I would say in the next one, especially in the next two years, but definitely in the next one year, I'm going to have a big song. Um, I really see people knowing my name, like really knowing my name. I know a lot of people know me, like mm-hmm. at PV and around Houston, but I expect to be very well known in Houston. Um, I already expect to have a show and have artists open up for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I expect to yeah, go to where li- Warehouse Live, you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's just in that year. I expect to probably go back on on the radar. I, I expect mm. to be on some big platforms very, very soon. Not very soon, but like in the next year. Um, next two years, I see myself not working nine to five anymore. Like I see myself getting into the flow of things, having a manager, a team. Um, I could see myself potentially getting a distribution deal because mm. I want to stay Indeed. independent. My goal, like my biggest goal, is I really want to. I really want to get managed by Rock Nation one day. Mm. That's like one of my goals. And I could probably see that in like three years, in about three. So just stepping stones. I don't think I, I don't feel like I'm just going to blow up tomorrow. But I mean, you never know. It you could, never, hey, you hey, never that it know. could happen. I'm trying to tell you. Just, no, let me take that back. All I'm going to say is my man's, he, I don't know if he had faith in the video he dropped the other day, but we did 60K on Instagram. Oh, so, yeah, so. period. And that's how you know you're supposed to be doing some shit Bet. because when you drop something and it immediately like starts getting a lot more views than what you expected, mm-hmm. that's how you know that you're doing some shit that you're supposed to be fucking doing. It's just about the consistency. <laughs> hey, all it is. I it think is that too, though. I think that too. That consistency sure. a motherfucker, bro. You gotta get into You gotta want to do it. You gotta want to do it. So I'm past the part of want to do it. I'm more so at the part of want to see 
what the outcome is, yeah, what the, the return like, is. Because me personally, I am one of those people that I'm not going to put effort into anything that I don't see nothing coming, coming back, back on. Yeah. So I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. Especially, you know, we don't get time back. Mm-hmm. It ain't like I can turn that clock back, you know, go back to 17. Yep. I would love to, but mm-hmm. that's not possible. Um, I did have a question. No, you said that, uh, you know, you were talking about you, uh, what you see yourself in the next, you know, few years. I love a good PV party. Could we expect to ever see you performing on the stage? Mm. Perform again? Because I, I, yeah, I did. Um, what was that? What was that? That uh, party called? My what was that party called? What was that party? It was a. It was a. What was that? It was one of Rondo's parties that he had. It was his past homecoming. Yes. What was that party? Start start with the S. Which ones we hit? We hit PV Holix. What That's was that what Friday? It was. It was, it was Holix. Mm-hmm. It was PV Holix. I performed there. Um, I hope that this that this homecoming. I hope that this homecoming. Hey, I hope that that this homecoming. Um, we can have another like I can perform again at another party for sure because I want to do it a little bit differently this year. Okay. Okay. Um. And that was another one that I want to ask too. So, I still don't like that you said you don't you don't you don't really like us Sagittarius or whatever I, that take I didn't was. Say that. I just said mm-hmm. what you know whatever that take was. But I'm very big in astrology, and one question that I like to ask people. Red flag. <laughs> Red flag, ladies. Or if he <laughs> knows his moon sign and his rising sign. Red. Flag. Very in tune with my emotions. Very in tune with everything. But. Yeah, that's some sassy ass nigga. Come on, that dog. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that dog. I don't do all that emotion and all. Nah, yeah, nah. Okay, wait. Trauma? Let's nah, talk about nah, it. nah, 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 nah. None of that trauma, nah. Trauma? What's going on? No okay. trauma, no trauma. No but trauma. if you could delete one zodiac sign, Pisces, well, y'all gotta go. Y'all gotta go. Y'all have to go. Y'all, y'all, y'all gotta go. I, why? I'm, I'm, I'm tired. Too emotional. I'm tired of y'all holding in y'all emotions and then exploding on everyone and looking at us like, like it's our fault. I'm tired of y'all doing things that y'all don't want to do and then blaming us because you said yes. Mm. I'm over it. Mm. I'm over y'all being so dramatic. Uh, that's cancers. Mm. That's cancers. Um, Pisces, I would delete them for that reason. The men in general are awful, but Pisces men are so manipulative and they're emotional. <laughs> oh, like em- an emotional manipulative... Ma- See, that's some Pisces energy right there to just mess Bro. up. Bro. But they're emotionally people, emotionally, emotional people who are also man- manipulative, the worst kind of people. And y'all Pisces are females. Y'all are cool. It's just, like I said, stop resenting people because I asked you, or not me, but we asked you to do something. And you said yes. And now you driving there with an attitude. Now you got to ask me for it. My mom, mom, Bro. mom. That's how I feel about them damn cancers. Fuck them. Then, but the cancers, I feel like cancers will explode on you faster than Pisces. Cancers piss me off for a multitude of reasons. They, they'll they explode on you, then start crying mm. mid-explosion, and then play victim afterwards. That's just girls. And it's like, bro. I ain't with all this Zodiac. <laughs> I don't know nothing about it. Why oh. are you acting like this? <laughs> <laughs> like Pisces women. I had a Pisces friend. I haven't had, like, a close Pisces friend in a really long time. Um, I don't know. I I feel like once they have that chip on their shoulder, they, because they're so emotional, so they just feel things so deeply. And they're very explosive. To be a water sign, they're very explosive. You would think that, um, you think an Aries would be like that. But they're, Pisces are not straightforward about their, their emotions. And... I feel like because they're not straightforward about their emotions, I feel like because they're not straightforward about their emotions, they get upset because they're not communicating how they feel. Uh-huh. So they mad about it. They mad at you because you don't understand what they saying. But girl, you ain't say it like that. Like you cussed me out and you said, you said, fuck me. So how am I supposed to know that you was really, uh, you was sad. That's why you said you was <laughs> sad. You tell you acting like you mad. Like, but that's how Pisces are. I feel that one. 
I feel that for sure. They is they do be tripping between them, the cancers, and then another one that I don't like, and they're crazy as shit. Gemini's. I can't stand <laughs> they ass. Bro, I, I like Gemini. Them niggas is crazy. <laughs> From, I like from women to 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 men, <laughs> they is crazy. I had a Gemini you know what? ex. You are so right. I had a Gemini ex. She pulled up on me. She didn't pull up on me. I was already at a crib, but she snuck up on me from behind and put a, a butcher knife to my neck. You know what I'm saying? Like crazy. I Bro. Know. What and, and what is the common denominator in all of these situations? They're crazy. Facts. That's the common denominator. <laughs> the accountability. <laughs> <laughs> Look, me and him. He know that I ain't no, wrong. No, the accountability. Oh. <laughs> he know I ain't wrong. No. He told me that I wasn't wrong afterwards, too, because I was thinking in my wrong. head, I just sat there for a how second. Do you, I said, you know what, Lord? Men, how y'all so consistent on getting crazy girls? Oh, shit. They come to me. You, boy, hey, I ain't gonna lie. They come there to was me. no red flag. I honestly was thinking that the other day. I, y'all hey, don't do nothing to make girls bro, crazy. Bro, I swear to God, I was thinking that the other day. Why so do I always get crazy ones, bro? Oh. Every, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't it's did nothing in a long three years. You know, every yeah. girl like crazy, like okay. tripping. Well, what did you do to her? It so. might be me now. Now I think about it. it might be me. I think social media <laughs> makes it crazy it be though. Me. Social media got everybody acting yeah. out of character. Yeah. That's where yeah, shit just gets twisted and yeah, niggas start thinking they can do certain things. Like that's what you see on the internet. Please don't come this way doing that shit. I ain't, wait, like like what kind of stuff? Shit, her putting that damn knife up to my neck. That, Look, <laughs> that, that shit is, is it your fault. No, it's not. No, it's not. You don't put a knife up to someone's cap. neck. That, that's not your fault. You you almost died. You, Literally. You, is you good? And your head, her, her mama is still <laughs> in the house. Good? Like, why is you trying to pull this knife on me? Her mama in the other room. So uh, my whole thing is, here's my thing. There's no way that you was dating someone that put a knife to your neck and there was no red flags, bro. Like, there's no way it went zero to 100 that quick. So you telling me, you telling me you ain't do nothing, you ain't see nothing, you ain't hear nothing. I was like, what, 19? Nah. I wasn't paying attention to that shit. Okay, so 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 you wasn't paying attention to to anything. Maybe maybe that's what it was. I wasn't seeing the signs. Trust. I don't know, bro. Like what's the I ain't signs? Gonna lie. We maybe always see the you signs. Choose we better always, we what always is the do. signs? I I don't know, but you when know you meet them, when you, you meet them, they're they're the sweetest thing yeah, in the world. I ain't gonna lie, that is true though. That so is what true. are the signs? After them first three days, hey shit. I feel like they those jokes that we tell don't not they don't be jokes. Like those little jokes and little crazy jokes that we tell, they don't be jokes at all. Because mm-hmm. a person that's like, like if someone says, "Yeah, my man cheated on me," I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up their car. Believe them, believe them. Because I don't even play like that. Like I wouldn't <laughs> even say I'm gonna mess up. I, I will mess someone's car up. I wouldn't do that if they say it. Believe that they're not joking. They're not joking. But there are red flags. You just. You when you, you when, like, that when little, you like them so much, you just you really just don't pay attention to it. I ain't gonna. I'm just keep the band. You it's there, but you just you you like them too much, so you just let they it pass. Do crazy things, man. But Gemini's, um, oh my God, Gemini, ugh. Gemini's. One thing I'll say about Gemini's is I feel like they're very, very manipulative. They're so like they're they're like a talking sign. Like they can really like run their mouth, yeah. and they can really convince you that you're tripping and you're not tripping. They're tripping, so I was and they're delusional. The they are so, they're so delusional. Like, Gemini's are, they're the most delusional sign. I think them and Pisces are very delusional. I agree. Fuck them, shit. Delete all the ass. But <laughs> <laughs> we we just about halfway through 2024. 20, uh, what would you say your upcoming projects, uh, as far as, like, which ones are you most excited for? So I have a song um, that I've been working on. Um, I performed it a few times. It's called Chow. And I'm really excited about that. I haven't released a real music video since Spit About You. Um, when I released it, it got like 200K views. Mm-hmm. And I actually wrote it about my boyfriend over there. And it actually got about um, 200,000 views in like three or four weeks. So I was crazy. But I haven't released a actual music video. I've done like mic drops. So I'm really excited about that because now I kind of know what to do, how to release my music, how to get it through um, certain channels, um, marketing. I feel like I have like a better team with me as far as content. Mm-hmm. I know how to push my content. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And hopefully coming soon, um, I'll have an EP. And if, if not at the end of this year, then it's going to be sometime next year during the spring. How many songs? Mm. Eight. Uh-huh. I haven't figured it out yet. 
I ha- I have not figured it out yet. Um, but I am gonna be trying um a different sound. Okay. Than what I've had out. Be on the lookout for it. Okay, so okay, I got a question. Who would be your greatest feature on a song? Who would you want? Your artist. Hmm. Who would I want on a song? I feel like I would want Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah. I feel yeah, like I, I would really crazy. want Megan Thee Stallion. Um, I love how she raps. I love how confident she is because I feel like I'm the same way. And I just love her. Oh, she's just so beautiful. But I would say Megan Thee Stallion. I feel like she would eat up a beat. Like, eat up a beat. Um, who else would I want one from? Doja Cat. I like Doja Cat. Even though I don't have music out like that yet. Mm-hmm. But... I'm very versatile, like Doja Cat. Like, definitely, I'm I'm versatile like her, and I would like to do a song with her one day because she would like take the beat and eat it all the way up. Okay, so my 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 dog right here got a request for you. I don't know if he's ready to make his request yet. I thought nah. Okay, so let me see. I thought about it. We had talked about it. We did talk about it. So. Wait, can we get a freestyle out of you? If, even if it's just five bars or... A freestyle? Oh, y'all put me on the spot? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. To a beat? Or just like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's your your choice of the beat. You can pick on whatever beat. You can go five bars, two bars. It's up to you, shit. Y'all want me to just, like, make it off the dome? It's up to you. It don't matter. It can if be you, something you already wrote. It can be... Yeah, it's up to you. If you can do it right now, yeah. I said, let's do it. Okay, let me If think. not, I do got an idea when we can get you back in the studio. Mm-hmm. And I want to do something, like, real, like, turn. I told you I can't freestyle. You trying to give me a... I know. That, I, you see, I didn't say it. He said I, I didn't say it on oh, purpose. Shit. I remember you said well, it. I, it was just um, thought from him. <laughs> <laughs> I had edited that whole thing. Huh? Yeah, he mean I had, a, like, a videographer but i edited every single ad and if you look you'll actually see the picture of the cash app to an automatic voice message system because i'm messy hey, i came out swinging like i need to cook it up and then i eat it in his drinks he can't believe it bitches man i got her feeding in my phone i know he's scheming in his mind i know he's screaming now we begging what's the reason niggas coming go like season i saw me now he heat me up i pull it down drive a crazy round town to take it back and forth niggas down to run a mile got niggas fighting for the crown so my nigga put it down and now we dare did it die Niggas don't Ew. charge nothing. Ew. Ew, Y'all ain't got car. no speech, mother. Ew, car. Ew, car. <laughs> don't put that on me. <laughs> we just heard Cash Up. They heard Cash Up. Let's talk about the backstory behind this song, you know, creating the song, putting it together. Take us through it, River. So when I first started, started doing Cash App, it was not going to be called Cash App. It was going to be called Black Sheep because I talk about it in the song, Being a Black Sheep. Um, But then a nigga made me mad that day. So let me just walk y'all through this. Y'all ever, uh, to the girls, y'all ever dealt with a man who don't want, don't really want nothing from you, but he won't leave you alone. And he he gonna send you some money on Cash App and say unblock you. (laughs) Have y'all ever had someone do that? Like send y'all some shit on Cash App? Never? Ladies. Or like email you? Or like try to get in contact with with you in some way when you block? I know y'all have had that happen to y'all. I know y'all have. Okay. So... Um, I had stopped dealing with him, and he was a Gemini. Sorry about that. Fuck him. Um, <laughs> he was a Gemini. And basically, um, my inspiration off of this, around this time, I had seen a page, and this page was created a month before I found it. And every tweet was adding me, and it was liking all of my things. And it was saying stuff like, unblock me, I miss you. Now, I don't have that many people blocked, especially anyone I've dealt with. I don't have a lot of people just blocked. So it was it was easy to kind of narrow it down. Um, and since that was something that he has, he's done something similar before, going on like his spam page and interacting with my stuff, I had to block him on there too. Um, I'm like, let me just go ahead and ask him if this is him. So, and th- this part's important because he tries to, bring bring this part back um i taught to my boyfriend and as god and my as my witness i gave him a call and he the first time he didn't pick up he called back i said hey did you make this fake page uh and he said 
This is why I'm talking about niggas just be lying. I said, did you make this fake page? He said, <clears throat> what? I was asleep. <laughs> what, nigga? You were asleep for a whole month because it was made a whole month ago. And I said, I'm just asking because you've made a page, you've done something like this before. He said, he ain't do it. I said, okay. He said, why you ask? I said, because you done, you done, done something like this before. Hung up. Before I could even walk back out my room, um, he called me again and said, uh, repeat the question again, because clearly you just want to have a conversation. He said, why did you, why you blocked me? Are you going to yeah. keep me blocked? Yeah, nigga, I was going to keep you blocked. He said, why? Because I don't like you. Like, I genuinely don't like you. It doesn't even have to do with me being in a relationship. I just don't like you as a person, nigga. Um. And that should hurt. That, that's, that's a big one. That's a big one. Um, so I go on about my life, go on about my merry way. I go to work, and I look at my phone. I got a cash app. Hmm, what's this? It's this motherfucker. I'm going to call him DJ Dickhead. So it's this motherfucker, DJ Dickhead. Okay. So this is your second time this year sending me a cash app. You know I want nothing to do with you, so now I'm going to put it on my story. So I put it on my story. Mm -hmm. Real messy shit. <laughs> and it, it had his name on there. Now, I had him blocked, but I'm, I'm sure he either was stalking me, someone told him, or maybe he saw it. I really do not fucking know. So he goes on Twitter and he's calling me delusional. Delusional? So I unblock him. And I reply. And I this you this nigga with a screenshot of that one cash app. And he blocks me. Cool. So I have my best friend, Cat like, I sent her the screenshot of both cash apps because you cash out me in February too. I send those. Now he on Twitter saying I'm lying. Screenshots don't fucking lie, but mm -hmm. okay. And ain't, ain't this your name, nigga? So after that, um, he tried to, it's what I'm saying. I mean, remember I told you before I called him, I let my man know. Actually, actually, I'm missing a very important part. When I found this page and I asked him about it, suddenly the page is gone. The page, page, it done disappeared, right? When I started going off on him on Twitter, a new page was made. But this new page was now calling me all kinds of bitches and hoes. It's saying that I was doing all kinds of shit when I was in Lufkin when I was a kid. And which is crazy because I never dealt with anyone in Lufkin. So I knew that was a lie. But it's mm -hmm. it's common knowledge that I'm from Lufkin. So that's they're not saying information that's just only someone in Lufkin would know. Because number one, it's a lie and everyone knows I'm from there. So I actually tracked that IP address and I saw that it was Hold on, it, wait, you what tracked the, the IP address. What did you just say? How the hell you do that? You did that? How did... What, wait, wait. Team? How did she even do that? Team was a part of this? Team? So we tracked the IP address, <laughs> and we saw that it was in Houston. And IP address? That's that IP. baby hall oh, shit. So every, <laughs> every, every time you get on a device, mm -hmm. um, there's an address to it. Mm -hmm. So that's how we can track who sent who sent certain stuff it doesn't tell you all the information but it'll at least give you a location like a general location mm -hmm. and it was coming from houston and i just can't see anyone like it doesn't make sense why would someone in lufkin be making you know a page so this new page is now coming and saying oh well you know you cussed him out and it was me it's not even him like he's someone else this page ain't got no followers <laughs> and ain't following nobody right <laughs> How, you know, like when he didn't respond to it, like he didn't at the tweet, but he made a responding tweet to this page. It was him. How the fuck do you see a tweet? That has zero followers. That has zero fucking followers. And suddenly this page came, like it, it came out of fucking nowhere, mm -hmm. right? So at this point, I know it's you, but I never said, I never told him, I think it's you. I never said that. Um, so then he starts to message my boyfriend and it's like he messaged him and was like, can you please, um, tell River to take the, um, take the post down because I have a girlfriend and she caught me when I was with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And then, so remember I told you the first time I called him once, he didn't pick up, then he called me back three seconds later. He took that screenshot of that missed call, sent it to my man, and said I was calling him, trying to accuse him while he lay next to his girlfriend in bed. Getting so you thought off. I wasn't going to tell my man what I was going to do? Getting off. You thought that I was, and then who the fuck is sitting up here just dry calling you, nigga? Really? This and is also, why I said delete the motherfucking Geminis, bro. Delete them with fire, please. And Kanye. Rain down. Off, so. You said who? Kanye. All right, I, I I don't stand behind that one because I love Kanye. But Crazy. so so after that, um, 
where was I at in that story? So after that page, um, all that stuff happened, I decided, you know what? He playing, so I'ma play. And I made the um I made the song Cash App, which I'm gonna which we heard, <laughs> which we heard. <laughs> um, and when you watch the actual video, because it's just a, a mic drop, it's not anything too big. I just wanted to just go ahead and just get it out there because it was a huge fuck you. I actually have the screenshot in there. Um, he was messaging people upset that they were supporting me, <laughs> really upset. I have a screenshot of that. I mean, I'm not going to cap. I really trolled the fuck out of him because I have the screenshot of and I put it on another video. So I had performed at PV Holics around like that was like thousands of people that I had performed that with. And honestly, the rest is history. I've, I've been waiting on him to put it put it on wax. Like I thought I thought maybe he was going to get in the stew, but I guess niggas don't do that anymore. I guess they just cry on Twitter about shit. So he, rap? he tries. He tries. He tries. He yells on the mic. He does something on the mic. I don't know if that's rapping, though. I hate that shit. Hey, I hate that for you. I hate I that Playboy hate. Cardi trippy red bullshit. Why mm-hmm. is you in this? Ah! <laughs> See, the that's singing though. He be yelling oh, oh. like that nigga ain't rap. You suck. niggas be in that hell off a of perk. Them niggas be yurked up. <laughs> I swear to God, they do. Off a of perk is fucking crazy. But yeah, that's that's how Cash App. That's how Cash App came about. Y'all can see it on YouTube. It's on YouTube, Apple Music, Tidal, TikTok. It's on everything. If y'all want to go check it out, which. Y'all should, because I talk about everything. Everything I just told y'all, I told the story in the song. So, And it, a lot of people have been asking me about that. I've been wanting to explain it for a long, long time. Yeah, I got your answers now. Except who it is. But few of y'all know who it is. Y'all know when I'm who I'm talking about. And when y'all think about a bitch-ass nigga, he going to pop up in your head, baby. He mm-hmm. will. <laughs> Man, y'all go stream cash. <laughs> <laughs> so you named Megan, you named Ice, well not Ice Spice, but you named Megan Glow. Um, there's other artists. What's another one? Sexy Red. But what do you think about like the rap game with the women? Because I would really say they're taking over, especially with the summer. The summer music they probably gonna have you know the harder music when it comes to it, as opposed to the men. But what do you think about the the industry with the women and the rap game? How it's trending upward, really? We eating we eating these niggas up. We are eating these niggas up. Like I don't know. I I'm I'm a girl's girl. I'm a I'm a woman's woman, and I love the fact that people are starting to respect female rappers a little mm-hmm. bit more because they've always been there. They've always been there. Um, but as of lately, I think that especially I feel like with Nicki Minaj and with Cardi B and with all of them blowing up, Mm -hmm. um, I think that just kind of shows that, or I think it kind of put more female rap on the forefront a lot more. So, I mean, I personally feel like we are really eating these niggas up right now because every every time you turn around, it's a new song, like, and we we throwing ass to it. And it don't be y'all song. Bro, niggas keep beefing and... Shit, the females keep doing twerk music. Shit, it's that simple. Shit, I don't blame it. It's good music. Sexy put out good music. I <laughs> this nigga in this sexy shit. Bro. I love sexy, bro. I mean, we not we not just twerking. You know, we 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 talk about other stuff in there too. Like that's my favorite part, though. I ain't get money. <laughs> <laughs> we talking about get money. We get talking about getting money too. Shit, I do. But I feel like yep. women are definitely um, taking. We've been taking the lead for the last few years. Would you ever branch out outside of music, kind of like how Rihanna and? Uh, I believe Cardi's kind of branched out outside of music as far as business endeavors. Would you ever get into stuff like that? Like Absolutely. What? Absolutely. Like um, wigs. Mm. I love me a good wig. I love me a good wig. I love me a good uh, thin lace. We don't do the transparent over here. We do the, the thin lace. Um, but I would probably mm, do uh, <laughs> like <laughs> surrounding that. beauty, like makeup, skincare. I really do like skincare. Um, clothing brands. I used to model. Yeah, because um, I fuck with the drip. Thank you. My mama got me this. Hey, bro. <laughs> um, but I definitely see myself doing that. I want to be more than just, um, I want I want to be more than just a rapper. Like, yeah. first, I'm an artist. You know, I'm a rap artist. Mm-hmm. And I want to be an actual brand because I feel like I can bring something to people's lives, you know? Okay. So, could you see yourself getting a clothing brand as well? 
that. I don't. I don't know about a clothing like like making one. Yeah. I mean, I don't I like make, how uh, I'll make merch. Yeah. Kim K and uh, or or Rihanna. <laughs> Rihanna got one too. Rihanna got a little line, and that whole tough. I ain't even gonna cap. She got niggas in there and everything. I wouldn't wear it, but uh, I don't think I would. I, I don't think that's something that um I'm particularly fascinated about or interested in. I'm not that interested in like. I mean, I am, but I'm not that interested in fashion yeah. to where I would probably want to make my own. Thing I I make my own merch and that's probably as you have my face on a on a t-shirt or on a lighter that's yeah. like the most I'm gonna do I would collab but I wouldn't just make a, like my whole brand that's just not really my kind of forte. Is a what the fuck, bro? <laughs> don't vote. Don't Votes. vote for Trump. Don't vote Votes. for Biden. Vote. Vote for me, nigga. Bro. You want to make America great again, nigga? Vote for me, nigga. Fuck it. Shit. We turning this bitch up. <laughs> the fuck? Into flames. Up in flames. Do not vote for that Make nigga. America great again, Dog. nigga. Vote. Please <laughs> fucking <For> me. vote. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is serious. Like, this is not no jokes no more. Y'all, please vote. I wasn't joking. I'm not going to tell y'all who to vote for. Who said I was joking? I'm not. <laughs> That's, um, When you see my scare. campaign come on TV... Just know that I approve the message. We gone, nigga.